Uh, here we have the second part of the lecture of the lipoproteins. Uh, so we already discussed the uh, chylomicrons and the VLDL and the LDL. So this one is mostly about the uh, HDL and uh, a bit about the regulation. Uh, so first up uh, is the uh, functions of uh, the HDL molecule. HDL is the high density lipoprotein. We uh, discussed it in the last uh, uh, lecture and uh, it is uh, the smallest one and the density is the highest. So HDL particles serve as a circulating reservoir of these two very important proteins, APOC2 and APOE. Uh, we saw in the last lecture that HDL uh, donates or uh, gives these two uh, lipoproteins to chylomicrons and also to LDL and then it uh, takes them back. So HDL is basically a reservoir of these two important proteins it can give it to other molecules if they want it and the most important function is uh, for HDL is the uptake of unesterified cholesterol from non-hepatic tissues which is the peripheral tissues means most of the tissues of the body any tissue other than the liver and uh, bring this cholesterol back to the liver as cholesterol esters so whatever extra cholesterol is there in different tissues, this HDL takes it and brings it back to the liver and liver can metabolize it. And this whole process is known as reverse cholesterol transport. Another function of HDL is joining a fatty acid with cholesterol, which is known as a sterification of cholesterol. Uh, here we have the HDL uh, uh, metabolism uh, uh, and this whole process is also called as uh, reverse cholesterol. Uh, transport uh, and uh, uh, these uh, nascent HDL molecules or the baby HDLs uh, are uh, uh, synthesized uh, from the uh, small intestine from the liver uh, they go to uh, different uh, parts of the body and uh, collect any extra cholesterol which is present in them uh, so the nascent HDL has got one protein on it APOA1 which is the most important protein for HDL do remember this point as well and uh, it has got uh, a very uh, low amount of uh, uh, cholesterol or cholesterol ester in it uh, but uh, plenty of protein content is there. Now, what is the main function of this HDL uh, from any peripheral tissue? Peripheral tissue as I just said is uh, any tissue other than the liver so most uh, uh, parts of the body basically which have got extra cholesterol free cholesterol uh, this uh, C or free cholesterol will be taken up by this uh, HDL molecule. Before being taken up, uh, it is converted into cholesterol ester by attaching a fatty acid to it, which is done by LCAT enzyme, an important reaction in the body. Conversion of cholesterol C to CE, which is cholesterol ester by this LCAT enzyme, and APOA1 protein activates this uh, enzyme as we can see a positive with this arrow. Now once it has taken up uh, some cholesterol from different tissues, it becomes a little bit bigger and is known as HDL3 molecule. Uh, again, the same process continues. It moves to other tissues, takes up more free cholesterol in the same manner, converted to cholesterol ester by the LCAT enzyme, which is activated by APOA1. It uh, becomes even larger in size and is known as the HDL2 molecule. Uh, now, uh, this uh, HDL2 molecule, which has taken up cholesterol from all over the body, returns back to the uh, liver cell, and in the liver, it will be broken down. Cholesterol and cholesterol esters will be taken out, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, extra cholesterol in the body will be uh, metabolized by the uh, liver cells. Uh, uh, plus, it also exchanges some material with this LDL molecule as well, as we can. Uh, C in this part uh, with the help of CETP protein. Uh, so the reverse cholesterol diagram is uh, explained here in text basically. Uh, so the first step is uh, activate, activation of the LCAT enzyme by the uh, protein on the surface of HDL which was APOA1. So APOA1 uh, activates the LCAT enzyme and that will esterify the free cholesterol which is coming from peripheral tissue and convert it into the uh, cholesterol esters and uh, this cholesterol ester will increase the size of the HDL molecule uh, which first becomes HDL3 and uh, more cholesterol esterification and taking up by the HDL converts it to 
HDL2 molecule and uh, this one has got plenty of cholesterol esters in it. So it's called cholesterol uh, ester rich HDL2 molecule. Now it binds uh, with the liver and uh, sometimes with the steroidogenic cells uh, and the selective transfer of these esters into the cells is uh, mediated uh, by the receptor which is again important uh, known as SRB1 or the scavenger receptor plus B type 1. So this SRB1 receptors uh, uh, attaches the HDL2 molecule and uh, uh, takes in the cholesterol inside it and uh, reduces the size of the HDL2 and HDL3 and releases them back into the uh, bloodstream. Uh, and uh, on the left side of the diagram there was an exchange of material as we saw with the LDL molecule uh, uh, so uh, the cholesterol esters uh, is exchanged uh, for TAG by the special protein CETP uh, protein and this cholesterol in this way the cholesterol is uh, transferred from the uh, peripheral tissues uh, uh, to the HDL and from the HDL it ultimately goes to the uh, liver cells. Uh, here is the diagram for that exchange of uh, cholesterol ester and TAGs uh, between the VLDL and the HDL molecules. So from the HDL, uh, the cholesterol or the cholesterol ester goes uh, into the VLDL molecule, whereas the TAGs uh, uh, comes from the uh, VLDL molecule into the uh, into the HDL molecule. So these uh, two molecules are exchanged basically uh, one is given up and one is taken uh, back uh, between a VLDL and the HDL. Uh, next uh, here is the reaction that we saw is uh, very important uh, known as a sterification of cholesterol. So any cholesterol which is there in peripheral tissues uh, uh, first must be esterified before uh, uh, taking it uh, up by the HDL. Uh, so HDL cannot take it up uh, instead uh, uh, until it has been esterified and this is the process of esterification. The simple process is cholesterol uh, uh, takes up a fatty acid and becomes cholesterol ester. So esterification is conversion of cholesterol to cholesterol ester name of the enzyme is uh, lecithin cholesterol ethyl transferase uh, shortened as the LCAT enzyme and uh, this uh, fatty acid which we can see here in the uh, pink uh, uh, one is uh, uh, going to be added up into this cholesterol molecule so it simply attaches the cholesterol taken up by the lecithin lecithin after losing the fatty acid becomes lysolecithin uh, so this is uh, the details of the reaction uh, which is catalyzed by this LCAT enzyme. Important thing to remember uh, is uh, LCAT is synthesized by the liver and is activated by ApoA1 protein which is found on the HDL molecules. Uh, next up we have uh, the plaque formation uh, in the arterial walls uh, and it's an important uh, concept uh, in understanding uh, uh, atherosclerotic uh, disease uh, or the disease that in simple words causes the heart attack it uh, blocks uh, uh, the supply of uh, blood in the blood vessels especially the arteries and uh, uh, if uh, those arteries are uh, supplying the blood to an important organ like heart it can result in heart attack which is known as uh, myocardial infarction or if it was supplying the a brain it can cause stroke, uh, stroke in, uh, uh, in that uh, patient. Uh, so the whole process is uh, basically uh, related with the, the LDL molecules that we just discussed. So step number one is uh, whenever there is some endothelial injury uh, the artery is uh, inflamed or it's uh, injured due to any reason uh, this will uh, cause uh, uh, the monocytes uh, uh, that is uh, a special type of white blood cells uh, to migrate uh, to that uh, uh, location uh, so the monocytes uh, uh, will uh, move to uh, the uh, point uh, where uh, there is this inflammatory process or the injury of the endothelium has occurred and uh, they are converted into macrophages uh, uh, once they reach there so that they can fight the injury or help in the uh, help in the removing that injury or uh, any particle that is uh, causing that injury basically. 
uh, now when these macrophages, uh, uh, macrophages uh, reach uh, the location uh, what happens is uh, that they consume up uh, too much of the uh, uh, too much of the lipoproteins which is uh, the oxidized lipoprotein I will come to this point in a second uh, but uh, these macrophages uh, consume or you can say take inside too much of the lipoproteins and they are converted into a very dangerous types of cells that are known as foam cells uh, and these foam cells uh, accumulate uh, and they release uh, uh, growth factors and cytokines uh, uh, that causes immigration of smooth muscle cells uh, and uh, uh, these proliferate uh, produce collagen uh, takes up uh, lipids and uh, uh, all of these uh, are uh, more and more of these are converted into the foam cells uh, and eventually uh, they become so much uh, uh, as we can see in the diagram uh, these foam cells uh, accumulate and they block the whole artery basically so they have blocked it so the blood supply which was uh, uh, going uh, in this direction you can say uh, now it has no way of crossing this uh, whole uh, foam cells uh, or the uh, plaque uh, which has plugged this artery basically so the blood cannot flow and uh, the organ that was receiving uh, blood uh, on this side uh, will be affected uh, greatly by this blockage and this whole uh, uh, is, uh, thing is known as the plaque which has got foam cells in it which uh, uh, inside the foam cells are the LDLs or the cholesterols uh, uh, and uh, uh, some other uh, uh, collagen is there as well other lipids are also involved uh, so this is you can say in a, a brief summary of this uh, plaque formation and uh, uh, going back to the oxidized LDL, uh, the normal LDL, uh, you can say, looks, uh, for the example sake, looks like uh, this star formation. And uh, there are certain harmful things in the body which can convert it into the oxidized LDL. Uh, these things are superoxide, nitric oxide, hydrogen peroxide, certain other oxidants as well. All of these have got positive effect on this reaction, so LDL becomes oxidized LDL. Uh, whereas uh, these are what we call the antioxidants like uh, uh, vitamin E, vitamin C, uh, beta carotene which is vitamin A. So these three vitamins are very important E, C and A which stops this process of oxidizing the LDL. Now if uh, due to any reason uh, uh, it becomes oxidized then this oxidized LDL will be taken up by the macrophages and uh, uh, this would, cannot be controlled by this cell, this oxidized uh, is taken up by the uh, scavenger receptors which are uncontrollable you can say so they keep on going in and in and eventually so much LDL accumulates uh, in this uh, macrophage that it is converted into the foam cell this is what has happened uh, in the bottom of the diagram as well the macrophages are converted into the foam cells when too many foam cells they uh, give rise to the plate formation uh, so the diagram which I just explained uh, has been uh, described in text form you can see here the black plaque formation in the arterial wall uh, so macrophages uh, basically can take up the LDL uh, there are two types of receptors one are the normal LDL receptors and uh, the other one you can say are the bad variety which are the scavenger receptor type A uh, so when uh, the intracellular cholesterol concentration is really high uh, the LDL receptors uh, synthesis will be stopped uh, so that no more LDL can come inside in both uh, the macrophages as well as liver and any normal cell basically. But these scavenger receptors, uh, uh, they are uncontrollable. Uh, so that is why uh, uh, they will keep on, uh, uh, these cells will keep on taking the oxidized LDL uh, through these scavenger receptors. So LDL in the blood uh, is uh, liable for oxidative damage so it can be converted into oxidized LDL by the factors which are mentioned uh, any uh, oxidant factors like hydrogen peroxide or superoxide LDL gets converted into oxidized LDL and uh, these oxidized LDL will be taken up by the scavenger receptors by the macrophages which cannot be controlled which are not down regulated and uh, therefore it keeps on taking the oxidized LDL and eventually the macrophage is converted into the foam cell uh, which will participate in the atherosclerotic uh, plaque formation.
Uh, so we saw the plague formation in the previous slide and that is one of the reasons why uh, all the doctors uh, these days suggest that uh, the body should not have uh, too much high cholesterol uh, because high cholesterol will be stored in the LDL and uh, uh, when it is taken up by the macrophages uh, that will give rise to the plague formation. Now here we have a disease known as a familial hypercholesterolemia. Hypercholesterolemia means uh, too much cholesterol in the blood, higher levels of cholesterol than normal and familial is a term used when uh, the problem is genetic. Uh, uh, so due to the genetic mutation in the LDL receptor, so the problem is uh, in the receptor, this point is important to uh, remember. The main cause of this uh, familial hypercholesterolemia is uh, a genetic mutation in the LDL receptors. So when there is a mutation, the receptor will not work properly, so it will impair the receptor-mediated uptake of cholesterol from the LDL. So the cells will not take up cholesterol. Uh, so uh, when the cells cannot take it up, cholesterol will accumulate in the blood and in the foam cells that we saw in the previous slide. Uh, regulation mechanisms uh, uh, of the cells uh, will not work basically and uh, uh, this will result in high blood cholesterol levels and the disease as we just uh, saw is known as hypercholesterolemia. If uh, the patient is homozygous, uh, uh, it can uh, uh, cause a very severe cardiovascular disease uh, even in the young people as well. So if uh, both the genes for this uh, receptor are mutated, the patient will be called homozygous and it will be a really severe disease. Uh, so do remember the CVD or uh, uh, what we call the cardiovascular disease is multifactorial. It's not just the high cholesterol levels, but there are many factors that are involved for this uh, uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, high uh, LDL cholesterol is a main factor, you can say, but there are many other factors uh, as well. Uh, so very high cholesterol levels tends to correl correlate with this disease, uh, the cardiovascular one. Uh, the most important of, uh, or the most common you can say is the atherosclerosis. Uh, uh, but many times the heart attack victims uh, have got uh, normal cholesterol levels uh, as well. So there are other factors which are involved as well. Uh, low HDL, uh, HDL cholesterol I told you earlier is the good cholesterol. So when the good cholesterol is low in the body uh, that will also result in heart diseases as well. Uh, so high blood level of HDL, HDL as I said is a good cholesterol correlates with low incidence of uh, atherosclerosis. So if the patient person has high HDL, the chances of atherosclerosis uh, will be low in this patient. Uh, and uh, lifestyle changes affect HDL level if uh, you exercise regularly, if uh, 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 if you have a good lifestyle, you will have high HDL levels. Whereas if uh, uh, a person is obese or he smokes a lot, he will have low levels of HDL. Uh, certain infections, bacterial or viral, some inflammatory diseases as well, uh, causes a decrease in HDL and increase in VLDL. Uh, so this will have a harmful effect on uh, these HDL and VLDL, any bacterial or viral infections uh, and uh, uh, all of these and some other changes will uh, uh, lead to increased risk of atherosclerosis. Next up is the development of an atherosclerotic uh, plague uh, and uh, uh, as I said various conditions can initiate uh, the formation of this uh, uh, lesion and uh, uh, if there is an inflammatory process uh, that can include the cytokines and uh, the lipids will be oxidized in the LDL and uh, this will give rise to the fems, uh, foam cells that we uh, saw earlier as well. Other risk factors are high blood, uh, high blood pressure, uh, exposure to nicotine which is smoking uh, and high levels of LDL. So all of these uh, uh, causes uh, the heart diseases basically. Uh, at the bottom we have got a table uh, which uh, uh, has got uh, different uh, types of lipids present and their uh, desirable amount, uh, the borderline you can say and the high risk. Uh, uh, so total cholesterol in the body if it's less than 200 we will say it's a normal patient, it's a, a normal person, it's desirable. 
if it is between 200 to 239 then we say it is borderline means uh, this person has got a chance of developing the disease and greater than 240 means high risk uh, now it is uh, uh, very likely that the person can have some sort of high, uh, heart diseases the uh, same is the case with LDL we have to keep it lower than 130 greater than 160 means high risk patient HDL cholesterol which is the good one we want this one to be high in the body so greater than 40 is the desirable amount if it is less than 35 means you have to change your lifestyle or your habits to uh, increase this uh, HDL level uh, whereas uh, THEs uh, also uh, should be less than 150 in a normal patient.